chiropractor and naturopath, thanks for coming back. We're going to talk about different foods, but more so what's in those foods and how they really relate to your general well-being, particularly mental well-being. Six foods that increase your psychological well-being, okay, also for a great gut. So I made a few notes here. Now let's talk about a couple of different categories here. So complex carbs, which is one of my big concerns these days with paleo diets and keto diets, and people are taking a lot of the good carbs out of the diet in favor of high meat and high fat. Even though people talk about like healthy keto, many people still take it to an extreme and take lots and lots of carbs out of the diet. Too many fruits, too many vegetables, you know, uh, starchy foods, legumes, grains. A lot of these are stripped out of people's diets in favor for too much fat and meat. I've seen this routinely, particularly last year, I saw a lot of keto craze. So you need complex carbs. They're important for energy production, okay? Carbs also are very important to keep up um, good emotional health. I've always noticed that when people skimped on carbs in their diet, they became more grumpy and they had more mood disorders. Right? So complex carbs, obviously the brain needs glucose. So a large chunk of the fuel that we eat gets consumed by the brain and glucose is one of those fuels. Okay, Sugars feed the brain basically, but there are good sugars and bad sugars. And we know about the bad sugars, candy, ice cream, you know, a lot of takeaway food, high fructose corn syrup, artificial sugars, Lots of sweets, that, sweetening agents that are put in foods these days really to make people want to eat those kind of foods. Well, these things actually increase obesity and ramp up depression. So, but there's certainly not been linked with the consumption of healthy carbohydrates, okay, complex carbs, grains, nuts, seeds, starchy vegetables, green leafy vegetables, many different types of fruits. They contain very healthy amounts of carbs and fibers and resistant starches that really help to improve our gut function and our psychological well-being. All right. Antioxidant group, the brightly colored foods. We're told also today not to eat anymore by a particular doctor. Okay. Don't eat tomatoes. They're bad for you. You'll die. Keep away from bell peppers and, tom and, and potatoes and all the nightshades and all this sort of stuff. So where's all this junk come from, you know? You get some guy in a white coat hopping around telling you not to eat these vegetables and these will shorten your lifespan and all this sort of junk. Antioxidant rich foods are very important for health. They stop oxidative stress, they reverse oxidative stress, okay? So oxidative stress is important in the body for many different reasons. For example, energy production happen, happens through oxidation. But oxidation also a little bit like, you know, what can happen with iron and water. It can create rusting or an accelerated aging or damage to the body, which the antioxidants have to mop up. Okay, so the brightly colored foods are very rich in antioxidants. Okay? Avocados and those sorts of foods. Many different foods contain antioxidants, but unfortunately, again, some people are cutting these foods out of their diet. So don't do that, all right? If you want good levels, especially of the hormones, dopamine and serotonin, uh, antioxidants will help to protect those in, a, in the brain environment rather than having them being de degraded. So there's a lot to be said for these brightly colored foods in your diet. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, you get the picture. Um, aubergines, you know, tomatoes, bell peppers, uh, zucchinis, there are lots of foods containing antioxidants. The third group is the omega-3 or the fish oil. I call them the fish oils, but omega-3 you're going to find in walnuts and chia seeds and a whole lot of different things. So the omega-3 is very important because it's you need to get this in your diet. Your body can't make these essential fatty acids by themselves. So omega-3 has proven uh, through many, many different research papers I've read that people who have a diet rich in fatty fish, seeds, nuts, you know, and oils containing omega-3 tend to have a more positive mood and also higher cognitive function than people who don't have the omega-3 in their diet. So do yourself a favor and take some omega-3 in your diet, whether it's in the form of hemp seed oil or fish oil, or, you know, uh, things like that. So I, I can't recommend omega-3 high enough, especially if you want to live a long life. It's an important one to have regularly in your diet. One of the biggest killers is circulatory problems that people have, the strokes and heart attacks, and omega-3 helps to reduce that significantly. Right? Also, I've always found that people who have high omega diets tend to be more positive, not so negative. The fourth group are the B vitamins. 
Now here we're talking very powerful stuff. So many people, again, lack sufficient B vitamins in their diet, often through the type of food choices they make. They're eating the wrong kind of foods that are depleted in Bs. Mechanized farming and the superphosphate fertilizers uh, not only pull uh, many different trace elements out of the soil, they also seriously reduce the amount of B vitamins like B6 that you're going to be getting in your body. B6, B12 and folate are very important for mental health. Many different reasons why those three particular key nutrients are important. But people who suffer from depression often have a lack of B12, B6 and folic acid. You may want to check out the MTHFR gene to see if you've got a gene deficit there because that could preclude you from you know, being able to uptake uh, B12 normally. You might need to look at a different form of vitamin B12. But there's a clear cut link between low mood depression and B vitamins. Right? Energy production is dependent on B vitamins. There are several mechanisms in the body that derive energy direct through the Bs. Panathenic acid or B5 is one of the most powerful B vitamins for driving up energy production. And many good B complex supplements have got excellent levels of B5 uh, in them for that reason. But uh, any good uh, B vitamin, if you notice a definite pickup on that, I would urge you to look deeper into your diet and include foods that are higher in B vitamins. Okay? The fifth category are the probiotics. Now you're going to, we've talked enough about the, that on this channel, you know, the beneficial bacteria, the, the bifidobacteria, the lactobacillus, the enterobacteria. There are so many species there that you want to get up in good amounts. You'll achieve that mainly by selecting the, the correct type of vegetables, in my opinion. Uh, fermented foods, cultured foods and vegetables, starchy, um, you know, root crops really help to give you a good gut foundation like sweet potato. But the brassicas also, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, the allium family like leeks, all these foods will serve to give your digestive system a nice base for building you know, good levels of beneficial bacteria. Because you need the right type of vegetables to ferment to get those bacteria there. And those bacteria confer excellent benefits for you emotionally and mentally. So the people with the highest levels, again, I've always noticed this on stool test. The people with the highest levels of the beneficial bacteria tend to be the people who feel a lot better about their life than the ones who've got the lowest levels. The sixth one are the trace elements. So I urge you to eat foods like I eat, like seaweed, like a proper you know, dried sea salt, not, not the iodized salt that you get from the shop, nuts and seeds, organic vegetables, preferably some foods you grow yourself. So what I'm trying to get here, these foods all contain trace elements like molybdenum and manganese and zinc and copper. And these are very hard to get from many food sources, especially if you're going to buy vegetables and fruits just from supermarket, because you'll find that a lot of these foods don't even contain uh, good levels of vitamins anymore. Research was conducted years ago in Australia at different uh, uh, markets where they sell produce. When they tested um, tomatoes in Melbourne years ago, they found that they had a zero vitamin C content. And these are hydroponically grown tomatoes. So I don't really like hydroponic grown stuff. I find it tastes wishy-washy and it's just gross. So um, nothing beats proper, you know, uh, organically soil cultivated tomatoes. They taste amazing. I grow beautiful ones in summertime. So the trace elements you're going to get from things like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, Brazil nuts, almonds, walnuts. You'll also get them from sardines if you eat them. Uh, you'll get them from many foods, particularly if you grow some foods yourself with good soil. You're bound to get trace elements. Okay? So that's the six sort of groups I just wanted to discuss in terms of you know, the nutrients and some foods and mental and emotional health. If you can hit on these six categories and eat these foods regularly, you're going to find, like me, you'll be pretty happy most of the time, not all the time. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to click on the link if you want my free Candida report. Thank you.